Dark Red Podcast, episode 19. Let's go. I am Dark Red. Hey there, folks. Today we're looking at Vivek Ramaswamy, as well as Ann Coulter. She was recently a guest on his podcast. I'm sure everybody knows who both of them are, but let me just give a brief background for those who don't. Uh, Vivek is an American entrepreneur and politician. He recently ran for president, right, under the uh, Republican Party. Uh, he, he did run against Donald Trump, but somehow tried to navigate his way through it and is now trying to weasel his way into being a VP. And Coulter uh, is going to be a commentator on the right who's, uh, who's been a commentator for many years. She's written a number of books. In fact, um, she kind of helped to build Donald Trump's original platform. She had written a book called Adios America, which uh, she had given to Donald Trump prior to his announcement and he really embraced a lot of those ideas and you, you saw those ideas come out you know with, with the mexican or rapists and, and the build the wall um kind of rhetoric was was really a spawn of her she hasn't really been given the platform she used to be given she she after embracing trump and and he didn't build a wall she really went hard against him it's kind of surprising to see vivek give her a platform She's kind of been silenced in a lot of ways. But really, you know, when given the opportunity, she just comes out as a complete racist. Uh, let's take a look. I brought on today somebody who I think has some thoughtful perspectives on the future direction of our country, of our conservative movement, and on this question of nationalism and national identity, somebody who I've been fascinated for, by for a long time and have interacted with on social media, but for the first time we're having a at least live form conversation in the offline sense of it. It's Ann Coulter. So Ann, thanks for coming on and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Me too. Thanks for having me. That was a fantastic opening monologue. Uh, I too am a fan of yours. So I'm going to make a point of disagreeing with you so that it will be fun. Um, yeah. You are so bright and articulate and I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, can't can't say that about them. That's that's derogatory. Um, and that was a great opening segment. Lots of things to talk about there. Oh, and I agreed with many, many things you said during, in fact, probably more than than most other candidates um, when you were running for president. But I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. We'll get back to that. OK, so the explicit statement that a person would not vote for someone solely because of their Indian ethnicity or national origin is blatant racism and discrimination. In a democratic society, voting choices should be based on a candidate's qualifications, policy positions, and vision for the country, not their skin color or their ethnic background. Rejecting a candidate outright merely because of their national origin or race is a repugnant form of bigotry, and it strikes at the core of American democratic ideals. The United States was founded on principles of equality, liberty, and justice for all. Discriminating against someone due to their circumstances of their birth flies in the face of these noble ideas that made America a beacon of hope for so many. It degrades our social fabric and democratic institutions. Furthermore, such racism promotes a narrow, exclusive view of what it means to be American. The strength and vibrancy of our nation comes from being a diverse patchwork with contributions from people from every background and creed. To say someone cannot be a real American or represent American interests solely due to their ethnicity is both factually wrong and morally bankrupt. It's so sad to see these morals and values being embraced. Let's let's take a look and see what else they have to say. Um, and it's directly related to what you were just talking about. You know, the thing about nationalism, you're totally right. It is like to use the word nationalism. Oh, it's Hitler, it's Hitler. And, you know, Hitler had soup. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have soup. Mm -hmm. Hitler loved dogs. That doesn't mean you shouldn't love dogs. So I think we have to move past this. If Hitler did it, it must be bad. Uh, but I do notice when I was listening to your monologue, um, 
I, I don't think I do use the word nationalism. I would use a word you used in your monologue, which I liked quite a bit, and that's um, citizenship. There's mm -hmm. citizenism. How about Americanism? Yeah. Uh, I'd also point out that the only people who are not allowed to be proud of their ethnic group um, do tend to be Anglo-Saxons. Oh boy, you can't be proud of being white. This attempt to normalize racism and xenophobia by drawing comparisons to Hitler's hatred of certain groups is deeply flawed and dangerous logic. Hitler's genocidal ideology was evil racism taken to its most extreme and unforgivable conclusion. Dismissing that evil by saying Hitler liked dogs too is a trivialization of industrialized mass murder. The idea that Anglo-Saxons were somehow barred from ethnic pride is simply untrue. No one's stopping you from celebrating their heritage or just as we expect all groups to do without promoting racial superiority. The real issue is that some complaint benign cultural appreciation with toxic narratives of white nationalism and supposed threats of white genocide there are these inflammatory myths used to stroke fear and hatred. There's a vast difference between taking pride in one's ethnic traditions, foods, and customs versus claiming a race or ethnicity is inherently superior or threatened by demographic changes. Yeah, the former is healthy uh, cultural identity. The latter is, is racism, plain and simple. True Americanism means upholding the noble ideas that the U.S. was founded upon, that all people are created equal, regardless of race or national origin, and are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Poisoning that unifying civic identity with ethnic chauvinism and prejudices is what actually undermines and threatens our national idea and social cohesion. We are stronger together. I am Dark Brandon.